Thank you for joining me. Today I have Susan Fox from Gaga's Garden, who I have known forever. And she is one of the world's most respected consulting rosarians. And she's going to talk about some tips for planting roses, as well as different types of floral arrangements that you can do, especially if you're over 50, because let's face it, you know, we're all not getting any younger and none of us are 18 anymore. So uh, I'd like to welcome Susan Fox. Hi, June. It's so great to be with you and talk about our most beloved subject, and that's flowers, what we can do with them, what they mean to us, and especially now that Valentine's Day is upon us, how they can affect people's lives. So did you know in the Western world that people actually consulted a dictionary to make sure that the right flower, the number of flowers they were given were actually the appropriate, they had the appropriate meaning when they gave flowers to a very special someone. And I think that's indicative of how we can really put some thought into what we're doing when we give someone their special someone something for this valentine's day i think that that's remarkable that actually reminds me of my parents mm -hmm. my father who was just a world of or a wealth of knowledge mm -hmm. um, my father would always talk about different uses or some sort of history behind the different plants and whatnot and i do recall for valentine's day before it became a big hallmark uh mm -hmm. holiday um he would give these beautiful bouquets to my mom and explain what the different flowers meant so he was you know truly a renaissance man but it's interesting that you bring this up because unless you really are in love with horticulture I don't think that you're going to really appreciate, especially all the little details. Like, for example, with um, certain flowers that only bloom during certain types of the year and the history behind it, so on and so forth, which gives it extra meaning because it means that the person that is giving it to you really put a lot of thought behind that mm -hmm. selection. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And Susan, before we go any further, could you just explain? what the difference is between your garden variety rosarian and someone like you who's a consulting rosarian well a consulting rosarian is uh, someone who has actually taken classes and uh, there's a lot to learn before you can you get the credential of consulting yeah. rosarian and you take a commitment to help people and help them learn how to grow roses. So you dedicate your life to perpetuating the continual growing of roses. And, you know, what can be more beautiful, really, than helping people in the preservation of this symbol of love? because the red rose especially is a symbol of deep commitment and everlasting love. So, and there's a lot of misguided information about roses that they're difficult to take care of or they're um, hard to maintain. And that's, you know, there's a lot of mistruth because um well let's face it when you're doing something that you love is it really that difficult you know not at all difficulty you want to do it yeah difficulty is definitely associated with how much you care about the project don't you think so and you've been your gardens your gardens have been featured all over the world in different magazines 
uh, the American Road Society, so many different places. And obviously, in addition to your knowledge, you clearly love what you do. And I'm glad that you do because you were the one who inspired me to start growing roses because I always thought that they were a little too finicky, too problematic. And I thought to myself, like, I really need another project. But thanks to you, I started with uh, miniature roses. Now I have my knockout roses, which bloom every year. So, you know, I thank you for that. But, um, you know, especially for people who are over 50, who kind of feel like, you know what, my plate's full. I don't really have a lot of time. And let's face it, my knees are hurting or something else is hurting. I don't have the strength. Um, and it's not about laziness. It's just, you know, people have surgery, people have accidents, people get hurt on the job, all sorts of things that are happening in life mm -hmm. that prohibit people from doing a lot of things that they used to enjoy. So what tips do you have for people that may not have all the vim and vigor that they may have held, you know, earlier in life? I think when it comes to roses and really many other things that we love to grow, the hybridizers have put so much effort into making sure that these new breed, you know, the new breed of flowers are really simple. And um, I, I was talking to you earlier about now we all know that the knockout rose, I believe it, it changed the world. Because do you remember when we used to, well, you know, I don't, I don't know if everybody looks at the landscape maybe through the same lens that I do, but when we used to ride along and we look at the landscape, you didn't see roses in the landscape like you did before the knockout rose came along. And then um, they changed everything because they were in so many landscapes but now i'd like to introduce everyone to the coral knockout and the mini knockout there's a mini knockout that is knockout. absolutely the cutest thing i've you know i don't know if that's the right way to describe it but it just melts your heart it's a smaller version much smaller of the knockout and i you know, the dollars are tight right now. I yeah. don't care who you are. But annuals, if you're having to replace them every year, that's expensive. It's crazy. I don't know anybody that plants annuals willingly. Yes. Um, and unless they, they just feel that all that they can plant are, um, you know, the low maintenance flowers, the um, uh, impatience and whatnot. But they're starting to go up in price. And let's face it, not everybody has time to seed, uh, you know, from from scratch. Uh, also, with the weather fluctuating so much um, and with space being also a limitation, a lot of reasons why people just don't anymore. And in the same token, I'm kind of at the point where it's like, I want to focus more on my vegetables than I do my ornamentals. Right. So right. You know, I pick and choose my battles. So when you start thinking that roses are perennials, miniatures in particular, think of your rose as a perennial, then you're going to start saving money. And think of your miniature as a perennial that you're going to plant once and done. Then you can put that little rose in, especially that mini knockout, and it's so adorable just wait till you see it it's you know i wish i had a picture here because the mini knockout is the the perfect you know when you have your levels of plant you know you've got your boxwoods and you know those type of greenery but you put your little miniature knockout in there you're not going to have to go in there and put annuals in every year because you're going to have perpetual color and they are just perfect as the plant that you go and and put in and then um, you can deadhead every once in a while and they're going to just keep blooming and you're just going to be so happy with them. my brother hates when i deadhead at his house he's just like leave them alone <laughs> but you know it propagates new growth and a lot of people don't understand the purpose of it because you know yeah you might go a week 
maybe two weeks without any blooms, but they will come back in full force, you know? Um, Susan, I, I have a question. Do you have any pictures of the miniatures on Gaga's garden that you could send over to me that yeah. anybody watching this can uh, see what you're talking about? Because anything that you've ever recommended has always been magnificent. And yeah. Pictures, I put pictures and I, I do want to tell you, June, I am uh, up as fast as I can. I'm fixing things because as you know, um, I'm not on Facebook anymore. So if it's a video, I'm having- A lot of people are off Facebook. They're sick yeah. of it. They're sick of the control. They're sick of the, uh, what you can post, what you can't post, the fact checkers that know nothing about roses that I'm sure are pulling your stuff down. So yeah, people get it. If you, if you see a thing that said, oh, video not available, just remember that I'm trying to go over to YouTube and put the video back up. and. Um, so please be patient with me because that was the reasoning. But yes, there's pictures up and there's pictures of mini knockout. And there's also pictures of, you know, another flower. You, June, you and I talk about other flowers that you can put in with roses because I know you're a dahlia lover. Yeah, dahlia is great. There's a lot of flowers and, um, the you know, the first flower, my first flower that I love of spring is um, peonies. You know that. Oh, peonies. I learned a very big lesson about peonies because I had this whole army of ants that were all over <laughs> peonies. And um, I was just like, oh no. And I took a picture of it and I posted it. And yes, I'm actually a master gardener. Shame to say it, but you know, I didn't know that ants are beneficial to peonies, but yeah. But it's interesting that you point out your favorite flower for the first of spring. Take a guess what mine is. What? Dandelions. Oh, you know, I love dreaded you know, plant love according to, to Monsanto, that. but they are the most beneficial to bees. And when I see the first dandelion, I know that I'm going to start seeing more bees. So, you know. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, it's so wonderful. And, you know, back to roses, I, I saw. I learned something I did not know today, and I've got to share it with you and your wonderful viewers. But did you know that in that dictionary that came out in the Victorian age, did you know that the count of how many roses that you gave someone meant something? And really? I, was, I was flabbergasted that one, one rose, because you know, there's so much romance you know, it's so romantic to get one rose and that meant devotion and love at first sight. And then two meant mutual love. Three, I love you. Six, I want to be yours. I thought that was really infatuation. Nine, I mean, who knew this? I didn't. Uh, eternal love. I mean, I, you got to be careful with some of this stuff, right? I mean, what if the person you give it to knows it? To, and then you're like, oh my goodness, he's eternally in love with me or she. So what if, so what if he gives you a dozen and a half and you tell him what well, happens to the other, the other well, half? I gave a florist once who gave me a dozen and a half and I said, hey, what happened to the other six? 12 and six. Well, 12 is um, B, one dozen, be mine. 13 is a secret admirer and a forever friendship. And then 15, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Again, what if you just, you know, decided to throw them in there and you're like, I mean, I, I just thought, wow. And 20, sincerity, 21, I'm committed to you. And 24, I thought this was like really wild. So your husband, lover, partner gives you 24 just because they say, you know, they're really special. And it means I'm yours i'm thinking of you every hour of the day frightening <laughs> 25 congratulations 36 remembering romantic moments and then this one 40 genuine love i just i 40. didn't know that. i had never seen that before does your husband give you 40 roses or do you give him 40 roses no I, but I, you know this is a wake up call to me i i bet i count flowers from now on and what does a single rose represent? Oh, it was the 
devotion and love at first sight. Yeah, I kind of prefer the single rose. I think it has more meaning. Yeah. Plus, like, I love flowers, but they do die. I prefer plants, um, especially ones that are perennials that I can plant and enjoy, you know, every season. But um, in any event, that, that was very interesting. I any, thought it was. Any, intre any um, uh, insight on color? What the meanings oh, of the, the colors? I, I really do get a kick out of the colors because of... Well, the most popular colors, red, you know, is a symbol of love. You know, when 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 you give a red rose, you know that that's pretty commitment and love and and deep affection. And then yellow, you know, I always, if you get a red rose, it's a symbol of friendship. You know, and um, and that you're, um, you know, that you're committed. So. I, I would think if you're really sweethearts, you know, what do you do if you go in the shop and the only roses left are yellow and then you're just gonna, you know, <laughs> I thought that was pretty interesting. And then, but I thought it was really interesting because the white roses all the way back to Greek and all the way back to uh, a Greek myth, myth, Aphrodite was, they said was born from the foam of the sea you know, just Greek mythology. And uh, a Greek poet wrote that uh, after she emerged from the ocean, she turned into a white rose. You know, this wow. is just They're so fragrant though. Aren't they the most fragrant out of all the roses, white roses? Huh. She is associated with the Virgin Mary in the Christian faith. So, I mean, she, it, it's all, the white rose is associated with purity and innocence. Mm. So, I mean, I know so many people who love white roses. They're you know, the I most do. common color for bridal bouquets. Yeah. In but they do well to yeah. yeah. Well, and, you know, even, I, I mean, I know one that I just, I just love it because so many of the breeders had to work to overcome how they, they turn that little bit of brown on the edge. Yeah. You remember this year? What is that one that I love so much? June. <laughs> <laughs> it's not coming to me but there's one that's come out that just holds its color perfectly nice it blooms constantly it's absolutely one of the most beautiful white roses that i've ever seen and it just it uh it's covered with white roses all the time wow. i mean I, at my website i put i'm i love lists so i'm constantly doing lists of my favorite roses and it's on there and it was on the cover of the week's um, roses because it's fragrant. The um, their the um, foliage is perfect. I mean, when you don't have a rose that, especially white, that turns a little brownish, you know. Yeah. And um, of course, I told you what yellow roses meant, and I, I just want to make sure I got all the colors in here. So, I thought. I had never seen this one either. And I looked it up and it was, of course, yellow roses are good if you want to congratulate someone, be sure to get a yellow roses. And pink, pink's okay too. It's close to a red one. It still means admir admiration, gentleness, elegance, innocence. You know, I mean, if you're just courting, you know, an old fashioned word and you know, you're not wanting to rush things along you're always safe with pink, you know, you're not jumping right into the hot passion, you know, and, and different shades of pink can convey gratitude, you know, that you're grateful for that. So I think pink is always a good platonic message. Hmm. You know, good to know. I think that's good to know. And I thought this one was really good to know that fiery orange sends a strong message of fascination, passion, enthusiasm attraction and desire i love that i think yeah, the yeah. orange roses are stunning yeah so i mean you know if you want to really show you that you're just really smitten with someone with fascination and all that yeah i mean there's so many beautiful orange roses but then you know i hadn't even thought of this that uh, there's so many peach roses they're good for 
so many occasions because they're the appropriate thank you gift because they're and they're also good for sympathy. So I mean, I really dig I into that. these different colors. And burgundies, roses have a specific connotation of unconscious beauty. Who knew? The Madame Del Bard roses from Columbia, are they considered burgundy or red? Aren't they a deep kind of almost a burgundy? I think yeah, they're- I'm not sure, but I know that they are a prized possession or florists. Um, they can make it, you know, a surprising little change for Valentine's Day, don't you think so? Well, because they're not yeah. the same thing as a purple rose. I mean, they're definitely yeah. burgundy. Yeah, I just know then, that they're pretty pricey. And then purple is like enchantment and and uh, mystical. Hmm. You know, I'm not sure if people want to be mystical, right? And then, yeah. uh, I thought this was kind of strange and I don't see them very often, you know, because didn't I tell you that St. Patrick um, opens as a pale chartreuse? Oh, wow. And then opens to a perfect yellow. St. Patrick opens to the most flawless yellow, but it Spud is chartreuse green. And so when I saw this green rose meaning, it says green roses symbolize peace, spiritual rejuvenation, calm, and fertility. Who knew? Right? <laughs> so interesting. You, know, know. So you have so much information, and your site is just filled with so much information. And, you know, Gaga's Garden has always been. A great resource for me for so many people that I know that follow you on social media and also reach out to you for your advice. Um, before we go, I'm just wondering, do you have any advice for people that, you know, once again, want to be able to have beautiful gardens like you, but you now um, are not really too sure if they can handle the workload? Uh, is it frowned upon to hire people at this point? Or do they consider that to be still, you know, not something that you should do? I think if you, if you can afford, you know, to have someone do your gardening, but you know, the, the best part about, for me, gardening is doing it, but yeah, you know, if you, if you want to have someone put in a garden for you, then by all means do it. But I think, you know, I, I did quite a bit, of, you know that June, we talked about it, putting in a patio garden where you, right now they have so many, like that little um, mini knockout and so many beautiful um, miniatures. You don't even have to do a miniature. Do you know that the Floribundas now will fit in pots? I, I If I had to say I had to move into a, in, into a place that just had a patio garden. I put floribundas in those big round, can you see what I'm doing? Oh, <laughs> I, I was looking at the camera. I put them in this big round um, uh, tub. Do you, I saw, you know, I, I think I've told you, I really do adore P. Allen Smith. And I went to one of his um, presentations at a garden center and he took a floribunda and he stuffed about five you know you, you think wow. yes he did <clears throat> and he didn't care he just took he showed that don't baby them don't baby them at all if, yeah. if there's too many roots just pull them apart i mean you know if you watched your mom garden she'd separate the roots you know what i mean and and get more plants out of one, you know, or your dad, if he was the gardener and P. Ellen Smith, oh my gosh, he just put this in and put that in and stuck this in. He had the most beautiful arrangement. I'm sure, they were stunning. And you know, that's really the way to go, especially with limitations when it comes to how much room you have, so on and so that's forth. And- um, Downsize, I was, 
stunned at the number of people who are going into retirement because you mentioned something, you know, like, oh, you know, you watch all these young people. Well, I saw this number of people. It was, I'm sorry that I don't have the number because I usually I'm more prepared, but it was staggering amount of number that are going, retiring in the next couple of years. And they're going to be looking for ways they don't want to give up their, they loved their gardens in their homes. They're, they're going to look for ways that they can take little gardens with them. So why can't we garden out of patio? Why can't we buy tubs? And I see these things that are, you know, made of wood that are this big. Why can't we put herbs in them? Yeah, of course. You know, I grew a whole herbal garden in a wood thing, you know, where you can have your mozzarella and I, I put a few tomatoes. Your basil. <laughs> basil for your mozzarella. <laughs> Did I say I was growing my mozzarella? <laughs> yeah. You knew what I meant. You always do. But see, isn't that a great idea? idea so just grow your herbs. yeah I, I think that people should repurpose whatever containers that they have they can and this whole concept of keeping up with the joneses is just ridiculous you know people are always on this whole mission about climate change but yeah what are you doing about it what are you doing about your backyard what are you doing about you know the the fact that you're just adding more plastic to the environment and um you know why don't you start there before lecturing about all sorts of other stuff you know so there's just so much waste and unfortunately people still don't compost they still don't recycle even though some municipalities require it you know but um i just want to touch back upon the whole concept of hiring somebody to help all i could say is if you could find somebody trustworthy then do it but i had one experience where uh i had beautiful a whole a whole selection of miniature roses and because it was off season they weren't in bloom and the person that i hired ripped everything out because he thought that they were weeds and so you know and i know you've had that situation happen to you as well so you know just be careful make sure that the person understands that you have things that you don't want pulled out be very abundantly clear that they are not to touch certain things and you know it is what it is it it was, you know, uh, over a thousand dollars worth of plants that were destroyed and can't get them back. And I'm not about to grow them again, but it is what it is. So, you know, words to the wise, just be careful and mark, be very specific and mark the areas where they can and cannot touch. So that's my words. You know, that is really good information, June, because you, I have not been able to just turn somebody loose you know because take the time you know that what do you have a beautiful bouquet oh my goodness how lovely michael's they're all silk oh really yeah well i you probably saw i i don't know how much time but i set out um you know once people knew that i loved flowers they started getting me silk i mean um all of these porcelains so i brought them up just for the color. And, you know, we didn't talk about peach, but I'm a big fan of peach. So beautiful peach. And beautiful. if you are looking for something that you truly love this spring, and I think they're putting it out in um, the big box stores, I saw it and I talked to you about it too, is the, uh, um, coral knockouts i i explained that i had uh, started doing the um, um, mosaic border around the coral knockouts because they bloom all the time and that's what most people they must be stunning yeah well susan i just want to say thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with everyone uh always great to speak to you i've always enjoyed everything that you have to say there's always something to learn from you well thank you june and i just want to remind all of your fans to stay tuned to june she's always providing <laughs> amazing information 
And I just truly enjoyed being with you, June. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you, Susan. And folks, Susan will be back. Uh, So stay tuned. Have a great day. Thank you. You too, June. Bye-bye. Bye.